Good stuff. Okay. So, hi. I'm Vala, and this is Cecilia. Yeah, and we came all of here from all the way from Iceland. Uh, we have been working on this documentary for about a year now. It's about young web entrepreneurs in the US and Europe. And before we start, we want to show you a little, bit, little sneak peek from the movie. A really great founder seems to be building a groundswell, even if there's nothing there. And so he's, uh, he, in effect, is a magician. He creates something from nothing. You're always kind of just on the edge of your comfort zone. And everything you're doing is basically something you're just barely qualified for or not qualified for. And it's like jumping off a cliff and having to build your own parachute. I think an entrepreneur, it's a difficult one. How do you, how do you define an entrepreneur? Um, I think an entrepreneur is a person who dares to have a dream that not that many people have, and even more importantly, dares to chase it, put their money where their mouth is and their time and their career, and dares to take the risk of going out there to realize that vision. Entrepreneurs are some of the craziest people you ever meet. Um, they're people who have a dream or an idea, they have something that keeps them awake at night. You know, they get the opportunity to hopefully solve that problem or, or do something about it. Uh, and so the best entrepreneurs are often either solving their own problems or solving some huge thing, and, and they can really change the world. Entrepreneurship at the moment is kind of like the new smoking. It's cool to be creative. It's cool to be making something. And I just love that energy. Yes. <laughs> so we want to start with telling a little bit about the background, how we went into this. Uh, it was back in 2009. You probably all heard about the big bank crisis in Iceland. I was working at the, an engineering office at the time, and I'm an engineer, and I was one of the many people who got fired at the time. Uh, Cecilia was coming home after studying abroad in the US, and we decided we had to do something. We both on square one, and of course, we decided to make a board game. Uh, I'm not sure how crazy people here in Sweden is about board games, but in Iceland, they sure do love their board games. And uh, we didn't have any money at the time, so we just went bicycling to all the big retail stores and had like a little memo about the board game. And before we knew it, we had sold enough board games to cover the initial cost. And then we made this thing, here it is. Uh, we got all our friends and family to help out. And before Christmas, we got this whole cane of board games. I'm really cool at the picture, as you can see. <laughs> and yeah, and Cecilia drive the board <laughs> games around. And my dad and <laughs> stepped into Suzuki drive the board games. Uh, and to cut the long story short, it was a huge success. It sold out in only five days before Christmas. And we were so inspired, inspired after this experience, me and Cecilia. And we had this amazing feeling of creating a product and delivering a product. And this was a feeling we wanted, wanted other people to feel as well. And we also knew we wanted to build a proper tech startup. So we decided to travel around the US and Europe and meet with successful entrepreneurs, ask them the question we wanted answers to, to build our own startup, as well as make a documentary to show, to let other people hear the answers. So we didn't have any movie experience, but we didn't see that as a, any problem. We actually just uh, rented a camera, got a short introduction on it, <laughs> and started cold email emailing people out in the US. And uh, we got a, gotten in a lot of research, started Googling away, young entrepreneurs, successful. Cecilia always Googled young and hot entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. Not really. <laughs> and here's the places we went to. In the US, we went to the, oops, we went to San Francisco and New York. And in Europe, I want to say it was a scientific research where we went to, but we were on a budget. It was mainly where we could stay for free with friends. But it was amazing how open people were, were to meet with us. We met with some really, really inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. We also interviewed uh, investors and people from the tech blocks. Uh, I want to show you a couple of pictures from our trip. Here we are interviewing Zach Klein, the founder of Vimeo, in his cabin upstate New York. He lives there without electricity and unreachable by phone. He's a really amazing guy. 
And here we are interviewing Drew, the founder of Dropbox. Uh, Cecily actually went on a dance-off with him straight off the interview in a dance machine he recently bought at the office. I crushed him. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he let us turn off the camera, so we yeah. don't have any footage. No, I have no proof that I <laughs> won in dance-off. And you probably all know this guy, Alex, the founder of SoundCloud. Amazing guy. We met him both in Berlin and in San Francisco. They just recently opened their San Francisco office when we met them. So we let them go out on the rooftop. This is on the rooftop. They were making some changes on it. It was like an amazing <laughs> setup. So before we go any further, uh, we want to show you another sneak peek of Alex, of the interview with Alex. Here it is. SoundCloud launched their product after being in private beta for more than a year. When we decided to open, open the site for the public, um, we thought, well, we're in Berlin, so the right way to do that is at a club. Um, so we actually we threw a launch party at a club that our friends have uh, called Picnic. And we actually launched at 12 o'clock at night at the club. Like, uh, we had um, Sean, our chief architect, was you know, sitting upstairs in a, in, a, in a small room with a laptop deploying the site. And we were like, Eric and I were behind the DJ decks, like launching the site on the dance floor. And, uh, and we were just like, okay, it's going to crash, it's going to crash. But it, it survived. It survived the whole night. And then in the, the, the morning after, I was a bit tired. But the first thing, you know, we woke up was just like, is the site online? And it was online. And we started seeing, you know, we'd had sign-ups throughout the night. And uh, from there on, it was open. and, and, and and full on. Alexander drew attention to his company in a creative way. It involved a leather jacket and some spray paint. Every time I was doing a talk at a conference, I made sure to have some, some point in the talk where I could turn around so that people would see sort of this jacket, the back of it. Um, but it's good, like there was pictures of that jacket all over the web and like people were talking about it because it looked pretty cool. And I know so many investors that remember that jacket. So that was actually a good thing for us to you know, um, to get the VCs who see, you know, tens of new startups every day to actually remember ours. Um, so the jacket, you know, it was a, uh, some spray paint and a cheap H&M jacket. It was probably, you know, a, a pretty, pretty good 50 euro marketing, uh, marketing stunt. <laughs> yeah, we have finished the movie. We are figuring out the distribution plan. So please sign up on our website, startupkids.com, to get updates about, about when and where you can see it. Yes. Uh, so Vala, so Vala has told you about the startup kids, um, and she also told you that we always wanted to build our own tech startup. So, so we are now making a mobile application that turns your whole life into a game. Uh, and there's actually really, really similar making a documentary and making a startup. Uh, and uh, we interviewed 70 entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, so, so we thought we had a lot of experience, but we are like falling in every trap, though, <laughs> with doing our startup. Uh, so, with this uh, with this experience, interviewing all these people, we have found the secret formula, and I'm going to share it with you. Uh, this is Vala, by the way. The secret formula. Uh, it's number one, of course. What's the startup kits? Number two. Follow your heart. That's what everybody in America tells us. And number three, start no later than today. Okay, so no, really, there's no uh, secret formula. Um, it's it's really, really hard to learn it from a book. You kind of have to have hands-on experience. Uh, uh, you you have to love your idea and have a lot of a lot of passion for it. Uh, because uh, you can't like you can't be money driven in the beginning because it's kind of it's not enough motivation because doing a startup it's really really hard so you have to have something uh, you have to have something uh, else. Um, um, so yeah, so uh, people often ask us uh, what are the main characteristics of a social entrepreneur. Uh, of course, you have to be really, really smart. Uh, uh, you have to be in determined enough to see your projects go through. Uh, you have to have a lot of passion for your idea. So, for so. For
for example, we interviewed uh, uh, Sackline from Vimeo, and he actually broke up with his girlfriend just because he thought the, nothing was as important as Vimeo. Uh, not that we recommend you ruin your personal relationships, but it's just... Uh, um, and also what's really, really important is to be resourceful, uh, like you actually saw um, uh, Alex with the spray-painted jacket. You have to be creative to find ways to, to get ahead. So I think it's uh, appropriate to end with some quotes from our uh, uh, movie. And you have to read it like, uh, like really inspirational. Follow your heart, follow the things that really matter to you. If you do that, you will become a big success. That's Tim Draper, one of uh, investors in Facebook. Um, all these people who are on magazine covers, they started out just like you in their 20s with no experience and they were able to figure things out. And just recently, Drew Houston was on the front of uh, Forbes magazine, so this has worked out for him. Um, and then in the event, just read the Nike shoe box and just do it. So, thank you very much. So thanks a lot. So uh, just to get started, so uh, what were your key learnings when interviewing all these entrepreneurs and how have you used that in Kin Wins? Wow, there were so many things, but as Cecily came, talked, <laughs> told us about uh, when building a startup, we knew, we have heard all these people talk about their problems and what problems they had faced when building a startup, but actually we have learned that we are going through all the problems as well. Yeah. Even though everybody told us about the problems, you have to like experience them. So, that'll be... Yeah. And you can't be afraid of failures, because you're like, you're always failing every day, because you don't know like what is going to happen, you don't know how to do this, or so... So, okay, you will fail at something, but you just have to like... Uh, you, have, like, you can never give up and just have to go, yeah. go and And finish. actually, we asked most of the people we interviewed about what they wanted to see in a movie like this. Mm -hmm. And almost everybody told us, like, I want to see, see and hear about the failures because, because nobody talks about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People only talk about the successful companies, but nine out of ten companies will fail. And most of the people we interviewed had already failed. So we feature a section about this, like the big failure part. Very good. So to all your speakers who are already here, bring up the failures and the true learnings <laughs> later on. So uh, you were interviewing a lot of uh, American uh, entrepreneurs, and you also showed a few Swedish entrepreneurs, the guys from SoundCloud, and I know, like Ted Valentino, who's a classic SSES person, and Nikolai Nyholm will come later on. You also interviewed. So do you see any difference between like, Swedish entrepreneurs and US-based entrepreneurs? Yes, we saw a big difference, and people told us as, as well about the difference. Um, there are a couple of thing, uh, things. It's, for example, the funding. People here get smaller fundings. For example, we met with uh, Mons Adler from Bambooser. I, I think he told us he got like 2.5 million in the Series A funding uh, when his competitor in the US, called Ustream, I think, got like 11. And also the process of funding. Uh, in the US, you mainly have to have a product, but here somebody told us, like, Europe loves Excel. You need, like, a 100-page business plan before you get, like, mm -hmm. considered to get funded. Mm -hmm. And other things... And, and it's also, like, hard for, for European companies to compete with the American just because of the press, you know? Because uh, right now, uh, like, the press and the... Un United States, like tech runs and all the tech blocks, they kind of follow a lot of the traffic and they cover mostly um, American startups. And one, a factor. Yeah, and one other thing that I found interesting is uh, it was actually Louis Lemur who founded LeWeb. He told us like the biggest difference, he's from France, but he lives in San Francisco now and has this startup there. He thought the biggest uh, difficulty for European startups was the language. I was like, really? The language? Because I think most of the people here talk good English. But he, he was telling us, like in France and in Germany, it was like a big 
big difficulty because people weren't able to communicate and like tell them about the startups and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then also one thing I wanted to mention because we're here, uh, it's the attitude. Yep. Uh, in the US, like the attitude is to sell yourself, kind of. Or you, you are, have this product and it's, it is kind of your identity. You're always selling yourself, you're, you're pitching, every, everybody you meet, you talk about the startup. But what we found here, for example, here in Sweden, was people were kind of shy talking about the startup. They were like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing this thing. Like, be proud, talk about the startup. Like, yeah. tell us how great it is and tell the investor you meet later on today, tell them Same. how great the thing is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, Niels and Emma, do you have uh, two quick questions maybe from the audience? Can we get this mic no. on? Yep. Um, I guess the overall question that's coming out is, when can we watch this? When is it out? You didn't tell us. Yes. Good question. We have actually had uh, pre-screening uh, for our Kickstarter backers. We had like a crowdfunding online. Uh, so, and we have uh, actually uh, also had like a little screening back home. Uh, but we are, like Vala told you, uh, figuring out the distribution plans and stuff. Uh, so we just have a mailing list right now. But really soon we will yeah. update like Really everybody. soon we know, uh, like we know the plan. And then one more question, uh, which is to do with how did you get hold of all these amazing people setting out from Iceland? Uh, yes, yeah. So we just uh, we just sent out like cold emails, and we had a really good selling intro. It was just like there are two Icelandic girls uh, <laughs> making a documentary funded by the European Union. We got like a small European uh, grant. Uh, and th then we just went from there and we met some people and then we just hustled our way around. Like yeah. we asked, can you introduce us to people? So it kind we, of yeah, went we, from there. We researched like who does this people, nay, who does this person we are meeting now, who, th who does he know? So we asked him like, can you introduce us to this and this and this? Yeah. It was like a snowball effect. Yeah. And of course, like we also uh, stalked people on conferences. Yeah, so if you want to meet someone here, <laughs> stop it later on. And also, it was amazing, like, people are so open to meet with other people and get them guidance, and it was like really, really easy process. You will find that if you need some help or yeah, like advice, something, people are open. They are not going to say like, no, don't yeah. want to meet with you. It's really surprising. Yeah. So great, thanks a lot. So I think a big round of applause for uh, Vala and Cecilia. Thank you. And before you leave, okay. please uh, choose a new story to be inspired by.